Hello everyone! Uh, in case you're wondering what with the music, uh, well, a hundred years ago, uh, on 24th of February 1918, uh, Estonia declared its independence. And today, on 24th of February 2018, uh, Estonia is celebrating uh, its 100th birthday. So I thought uh, what would be a nice way to commemorate this milestone? Well, I thought I should show a very nice game. Uh, played between Mikael Tal and Paul Keres. So, the Estonian powerhouse Paul Keres versus the Magician of Riga. And uh, this game uh, features it all. It has everything. Sorcery, piracy, uh, very nice counter-attacking, Tal moves. Uh, I mean, it features everything. And uh, it's also a game from the 1959 Candidates Tournament, like we've seen in my previous video, uh, where you saw how Mikael Tal beat uh, Paul Keres. Uh, in the end, uh, you also heard that uh, Keres uh, won three games and Tal only won one game uh, in this tournament. So, once again, we should marvel at this photo. Uh, it was taken by Gunnar Vaidla. Uh, it was, uh, the photo is uh, from the uh, match Estonia versus Latvia, also played in the, the spring of 1959. And there will, be, there will be a link in the description below uh, for, for you to enjoy this photo. You can use it as your desktop wallpaper or maybe uh, for, for your homepage on your smartphone. So, uh, yeah, and it was uh, the match was played in uh, the capital of Estonia in Tallinn. So, a nice photo as I don't have any other photos from the 1959 candidates. So, that being said, uh, let's see this game. Uh, in this game, uh, Tal has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Notice that Tal doesn't go for e4 against Keres. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4 and e6. Knight to c3 and bishop to b4, uh, Keres goes for the Nimzo Indian defense. Uh, we have f3, known as the Kmoch variation. Uh, d5, a3 now, and the bishop back to e7. Uh, we have e4 by Tal. D captures on e4, F captures on e4, and now the immediate e5. Uh, sort of looks like uh, black is offering a pawn here, but not really. You can't really capture it, because after queen captures, uh, now if you capture with the knight, uh, black will simply capture on e4, and if you capture with the queen, uh, king, then comes knight g4, threatening knight f2 check, and also grabbing back the pawn. So you'd have to defend this, and then knight captures, and all is well for black. Black is even better here. So after e5, uh, we have d5 now, I'm grabbing space in the center, and we have bishop to c5 immediately by, by Keres. Uh, bishop to g5, we have a5 now, not allowing uh, Tal to push b4 to kick away that bishop. Uh, knight to f3, and now queen to e7. Uh, we have bishop to d3, and now comes knight b to d7, and queen to e2. Uh, h6, now forcing Tal to decide what to do with the bishop, bishop back to d2, and now c6. Uh, so Keres wants to do something about uh, Tal's strong uh, center, central pawn chain. Uh, we have knight to a4, attacking the bishop, and uh, here, you know, a lot of players would consider a lot of moves. I mean, your knight, that knight is awkwardly placed on a4, so definitely you want to leave it there. Uh, bishop uh, moves like bishop to a7 come to mind, although then your rook will not be defending the a5 pawn, so you don't really consider that. Uh, but players would consider a move like bishop to d6, uh, but then of course uh, you have to worry about ideas like rook c1 and c5. Uh, uh, but in the end, probably the best idea would be to push b5. The bishop is protected by the queen, uh, but again, Tal doesn't want to, uh, doesn't want to, uh, Keres doesn't want to allow Tal to play knight captures on c5, as he really likes that awkwardly placed knight on a4. So, uh, here Tal plays bishop to d4, with a different idea. Uh, we have knight captures on d4, pawn captures on d4, and uh, bishop to f4, now by Tal. And uh, here, if you if you decide to castle, uh, then Tal has this very annoying e5 move. Uh, so first, uh, Keres plays knight to e5 himself, stopping e5. Uh, and here, it's a... Uh, it's a perfectly nice position for white. Uh, Tal can simply castle. Uh, he could play bishop captures on e5. A lot of moves are interesting here, but uh, you know, uh, Tal is haunted by the possibilities of the position, and uh, he decides to do a different move. He plays knight to b6, and although this seems a bit uh, dangerous, maybe even maybe even you know what's what's Keres gonna do here? Uh, he can't really move the rook. Uh, on a7 or a6, then your bishop is undefended on c8, and if you play something like rook to b8, then you're getting uh, in the line of fire of the bishop on f4. Uh, but here, Tal missed Keres' uh, counterattack. 
Keras goes for the immediate bishop to g4, uh, removing the, the bishop, and now this comes with an attack on the queen. Tal plays queen to c2, and now comes knight captures on d3 with check first. Queen captures on d3, and now comes rook to a6, and now Tal is in trouble. Uh, as you can see, the rook is attacking the knight on b6, but uh, that's uh, only half of the problem. Uh, the knight here uh, is, is kind of needed, as the knight is guarding uh, the d5 pawn, so black will be able to capture it if the knight moves. Uh, also, you don't want to play something like knight to a4, so... Uh, when presented with a choice of giving up uh, the central pawn or giving up a piece, uh, Tal decides to give up a piece. And in this position, Tal castled. So, uh, Keras isn't really impressed with Tal's sorcery and uh, he simply captures the knight. Rook captures on b6. And uh, here, if you were playing this position, you'd, you'd think, uh, okay, I just gave up a piece, so my king is safe, he castled. And uh, I definitely want to play something like e5, maybe push d6, then c5 will also be an option, maybe push b4 to break open on the queen side, get this rook activated, uh, but not Tal. Tal goes for another immediate Tal move, he plays bishop to d6. So sacrificing a second piece uh, just to make the, the attack happen a little bit sooner. Now, if you don't capture the bishop, if you move the queen, then c5 is coming, your king will be stuck on e8 as the bishop uh, is, not, is preventing the king from castling. So Karras again isn't very impressed, uh, he simply captures the bishop. We have queen captures on d6. Uh, and here Tal pushes e5. Now of course, uh, if you capture the pawn with queen captures, then you get rook 8 to e1, you lose the queen. Uh, but even after losing the queen, it would still be you know, playable for black because black would have a rook, a knight and the bishop for the queen. Uh, but uh, the, the C and the advance, the D pawn, will be definitely uh, making the position better for white. Uh, so after this E5 move, Keras goes for queen to E7, and now uh, you can't capture the knight. If you capture the knight, you get queen to E3 check. Uh, Keras would exchange queens, and with being up a piece, it would be easily winning position for him. So after queen to E7, Tal activates his last rook. He plays rook 8 to E1, and now he's ready ready to capture some pieces. Uh, here knight to d7 was played and Tal pushes e6. So again threatening to capture the knight and also threatening the f7 pawn. Uh, you can't play something like knight to f6 because e captures on f7 check, wins the game immediately. Uh, so after e6 Keras plays f captures on e6. And here uh, you do have a, a lot of options here definitely for white. One idea is something like queen to g6 check. Uh, after the king moves, you can sim simply gobble off the bishop, threatening d6 pawn, but now Keras would simply push e5, and uh, Tal's, attack, Tal's attack is prevented. So, uh, after this f captures on e6, Tal plays another Tal move, he plays c5. And uh, the idea of c5 is, is completely beyond me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, of course, he's attacking the rook, but th there are a couple of options here for black. Black can play rook captures on b2, he can play knight captures on c5, and he can play queen captures on c5. So both of these, I mean, all three of these options are, are, are good for black. Uh, in the game, Keras played knight captures on c5 with an attack on Tal's queen, and here Tal played queen to g6 check. Now, of course... Uh, you only have two options. You can play king to d7 and king to d8. Of course, if you go king to d7, you lose the game due to rook to f7 check. Uh, sorry, uh, rook to f7. And uh, your only other option is king to d8, which was played in the game by Keras. And here, uh, again, you have a lot of options here. Uh, one idea is to try try the rook f7 idea. Uh, but then Keras has queen to g5. He would offer to exchange queens uh, only good square available for your queen if you don't want to trade pieces is queen to c2 uh, but now queen captures on d5 and you don't really you don't really have any options here you could try something like b4 after a captures a captures and rook captures to go rook a1 uh, to maybe you know try threatening checkmate or something but knight a6 simply locks off the a file and uh, there is nothing to do here with white so after this king to d8 move, uh, Tal tries another idea, he goes for b4. He wants to open up the queen side. 
Uh, here we have a captures on b4, but now first Tal captures the bishop on g4, queen captures on g4, and here we have c captures on d5. Now, as you can see, uh, after all is said and done, Karras still is up a piece, and he has this massive pawn chain in the center, and when those pawns start marching forward, uh, it will be very dangerous. Uh, queen to g3 by Tal. Tal is now threatening queen to b8 check uh, with some with some nasty ideas, so one of them being to win the rook on h8. Uh, so knight to d7, guarding the b8 square, and now a captures on b4. Uh, Karras definitely has the time to capture the b4 pawn, but uh, you know you don't want to be uh, too materialistic against Tal, uh, allowing ideas like rook to a1 maybe, so first he plays rook to f8. Uh, he wants to exchange now as many pieces as he can. Uh, rook captures, we have queen captures, and now b5. Again, an interesting idea, locking that rook on b6, a6 and the c6 are unavailable. Uh, you don't want to really play a move like rook to d6, and of course if you capture the pawn then rook captures uh, maybe on e6, uh, but it's all still, you know, very, very bleak. Uh, this is this is a winning position for black, you know, uh, only thing Tal could hope for is for Karras uh, to mess up so Tal can trick him like he did in the Smyslov game, uh, but, you know, Karras is not the one to be fooled by, by sorcery and piracy. So, e5 by Karras. Uh, we have rook to a1, and now comes king to c7, not allowing rook to a7, rook to a8 check. Uh, rook to c1 check, king to b8, and now queen to b3, uh, attacking the d5 pawn. We have knight to f6, defending the pawn, and now comes queen to c2, uh, with the idea of queen to c7 check. So, if, if uh, Keras, for example, played something like e4, uh, then he indeed is, is getting checkmated due to queen to c7 check, king h8, rook, a, rook a1 check, uh, you have to block this, now comes pawn captures, threatening either pawn or queen captures on, G7, on b7 checkmate, uh, after you block this, again pawn captures on b7, this is checkmate, so uh, this would be very unfortunate, but you know, Keras is not uh, likely to fall for something like this. So queen to d8, stopping queen c7, we have queen to a4 now, uh, knight to e4, and now rook to f1. Uh, trying trying to get uh, some activity for the rook on an open file. Uh, knight to d6, and now comes queen to a3. Now, uh, this knight can't really move. If you move the knight, you get rook to, c rook to f8. Uh, but, you know, it's not a problem. Rook captures on b5. Uh, we have rook to a1, again, threatening anything. Uh, we have queen to b6, and after this queen to b6 move, uh, Tal resigned the game, and yes, this time Tal definitely did resign the game. Uh, as there is really nothing to do here. You can give a couple of checks, for example, queen a8 check, king c7, and after rook c1 check, rook would block, and uh, there is really nothing more to do here. Rook f1, simply d3, and uh, the pawn will win the game, either this pawn, that pawn, or, you know, however Tal would continue, Keras would win this game without a problem. So, this is one of the games. Uh, Keras won against Mikhail Tal in the 1959 Candidates Tournament. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, once again, uh, <laughs> happy 100th birthday to es Estonia. It's uh, you know quite a milestone to achieve. Uh, once again, we can marvel at this photo since you know there are there are so few photos. Uh, I mean, especially of this quality of players uh, playing chess in those days. So yeah, uh, I do hope you enjoyed the game. Um, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching. And uh, I will see you soon, probably with another game from the 1959 candidates. And uh, just so you know, we we don't forget. Here are the standings of the tournament: uh, Tal in first place, Keras in second, Petrosian in third, Smyslov, Gligoric, uh, Bobby Fischer, Friedrich Olafsson, and Paul Benko. So thank you all, and I will see you soon.